The next section is workers' compensation, and this is also out of your contractor's manual, and we're going to review the high points of the Workers' Compensation Act. Who's required to carry workman's compensation? If a company was started after October 1st, 1989 and has one or more employees, then they must buy workers' compensation insurance. If your company was started before October 1st, 1989 and has four or more employees, then you must buy workers' compensation. So basically, any new company, when you pass your contractor's exam, any new company that has one or more employees has to offer workman's compensation. Anyone working for you has to have workers' compensation. The employees of a subcontractor are considered the statutory employees of the general contractor. If the subcontractor does not furnish workers' compensation insurance to his or her employees, then the general contractor, whether you're a GC, BC, or RC, must provide workers' compensation insurance. Okay, you can't get out of it. A sole proprietor, an LLC, a partner or a corporate officer who elects to be exempt from workers' compensation coverage may not recover workers' compensation benefits in the event of injury. So you can get an exemption or an exclusion from workers' compensation uh, the corporate officers, partners, and the owners of an LLC. But then, of course, you, you, if you get hurt, um, you can't collect. Contractors must pay workers' compensation. The contractor must pay all expenses for workers' compensation. The employee cannot be required to pay any of the workers' compensation insurance. Also, the employee cannot be required to sign a statement that he will not obtain workers' compensation benefits if he or she is injured. It's against the law to ask them to do that or uh, require them to say that they will not uh, apply for workers' compensation insurance if they're injured. Uh, workers' compensation policies. Workers' compensation can be obtained by buying an insurance policy or by joining a self-insurance pool. The insurance policies may pay for all the workers' compensation related expenses or they may have a deductible such as an 80-20 where the, the insurance company pays for 80% and the contractor pays the first 20%. Okay, that will lower your premium, but if anything goes wrong, you're gonna end up paying more. Another option are self-insurance funds. A self-insurance pool is a second type of insurance. There are two types of insurance pools. One is administered by the Department of Labor, and the liability in this pool is joint and severable. This means the contractor is responsible for a portion of all the losses the pool experiences. The second type of pool is administered by the Department of Insurance and the liability is joint and proportionate. This means the contractor is responsible for a proportion of the losses that are limited to his percentage of the fund. A self-insurance pool offers a lower insurance premium in exchange for the contractor assuming more risk. The workers' compensation loss is not limited to the premium payment as it is with an insurance payment. Factors affecting workman's compensation. There are three factors in what a contractor is charged for workers' compensation insurance. One is the size of the payroll, the second is job type, and then the third is the loss history compared to other contractors. Insurance rates can vary from 25 cents on the dollar to 50 cents on the dollar for normal jobs and contractors with greater than average loss history can be charged higher premiums, as much as 75 cents to 80 cents on the dollar, on the uh, payroll dollar. Failure to obtain workers' compensation insurance. If an employee is injured and the contractor does not have workers' compensation insurance, then the injured employee can require the contractor to pay all workers' compensation related expenses as if the employee had workers' compensation. If the contractor fails to do so, the employee can sue the contractor in civil court. Fines for failure to have workers' compensation. The Department of Labor can close the contractor's business even if there is no accident. It is a misdemeanor of the second degree not to have workers' compensation covered. The Division of Workers' Compensation shall assess a fine of $100 a day for each day the employer did not have workers' compensation insurance. In addition, the Division of Workers' Compensation may assess a fine of a minimum of $1,000. A contractor who fails to secure workers' compensation insurance by calling 
an employee and independent contractor may be assessed a penalty not to exceed $5,000 per employee. If an employee is killed on the job, his or her beneficiaries are entitled to $100,000 in death benefits plus $5,000 in funeral expenses. Reporting an accident. The injured worker has 30 days to inform the contractor of the fact that he or she was injured on the job. The contractor should define an authorized doctor in the event an accident occurs. So you don't want your employees going to any doctor they can find. You want to have an authorized doctor that, that looks after your employees and tries to figure out you know, what's up with them and, and what's the extent of their, their injuries. Okay? So you want to have your own doctor, basically. Procedures after an accident occurs. An employer must report an injury to the Department of Workers' Compensation within seven days after an accident. If an employee dies or is killed on the job, the contractor is required to report the death within 24 hours to the Division of Workers' Compensation. If no medical assistance is needed and the injury is treated on site out of the first aid box, no report is required to be filed. The accident must be recorded in a notice of injury form. The contractor must keep the notice of injury and all related forms for a minimum of two years and six months, two and a half years. Failure to report an injury can result in a fine of up to $5,000. Final considerations about workers' compensation insurance. Benefits for workers' compensation are calculated based on the wages of the employee for the 13 weeks preceding the date of the accident. Workers' compensation is basically a no-fault system. It does not matter how or why the employee was injured. The exception is if the employee tried to commit suicide or tried to injure themselves or was intoxicated. To minimize workers' compensation expenses, stay involved with the injured employee and his or her doctor's treatment and determine a time when the employee can return to work.